Hey, what is going on everyone? My name is, as you know, Martin Nobel, and today we're going to be looking at Mac OS X Server 1.0. The first version of the Mac OS X operating system, in which was a developer release, and in fact, it was designed in 1999, and it was based on the Mac OS 8 interface. So while it's loading up, the other thing is, before this, this was actually the first Mac OS X release to actually run on a PowerPC computer, which is my Mac G3 over here. But it is, but before that, it was just called, called Rhapsody, and it was based on the Next operating system, which Steve Jobs founded Next after he got booted from Apple in 1985 due to a power struggle. So... We'll just wait until it finishes. So as you can see, this is the desktop of Mac OS X Server 1.0. Introduced in 1999, it was the first OS released into the retail market based on the next technology. As you can see, it has a similar interface to that of Mac OS 8, like I said before. So we're gonna go into about Workspace Manager. Mac OS X Server, PowerPC 750, 384 megs. I did upgrade the G3. We got the workspace manager, just like Rhapsody and OpenStep, you could just... And this was also brought in and then used for OS 9. as It was used in OS 9 as well. As you can see, the hard drive is UFS and HFS is the Mac OS X server. This is in my thing called administrator, and then this is the file manager. It looks pretty basic, but it really does help out. Now, if you go into the Apple look, we go, we're going to look at some of the apps we have in store. So we got the clock, which I, in fact, I just can't see. I think it just chucked in the clock over there, that's what it did, and when I quit it, it's gone. Can't believe they put an app for that, but then again, this is the first preview. We got Terminal, actually no, I just clicked on Stickies. This application demonstrates how apps for Mac OS can be easily ported to Yellowbox. What I think Yellowbox is, is an API which went on to become what's known as Coca. This was the way apps, Mac OS X apps were designed at the time. And we also had apps which were known as Carbon apps, which would work on both OS 9 and PowerPC OS X. Now, we're gonna look at Terminal because this is the first Mac OS to actually have it built in Terminal. It says localhost root since I'm signed in as admin. And we can do the basic commands such as ls. And this is the sound it makes. Who am I? Root. And regarding the terminal, you can actually show some colors and apply it. Or can you? But you can make the font larger. So that's the terminal, also known as the shell. We got preview, which you could use to open pictures. So we don't have any pictures here right now. Now let's go into our hard disk and see what applications we have. So we're going to go into Mac OS 10 server. Yeah, that's it. System. Administration. Actually, no. It's really complicated in the way they designed this first version. It's just a little too complicated for my tastes. And another thing is you can't right-click because right-click was not introduced yet. 
So we can go into Mac OS X server, system, administration, we've got the installer app. And there we go, local. You got applications, internet, OMI web. Administration, you got some of the OMI apps. In library, you have Mac OS users. HFS Macintosh HD, which is my Mac OS 8 installation. Now we're going to system, we actually found it. Administration, you got all the apps, Assistant, Disk First Aid, QuickTime Stream, Process Viewer, which was another name for Activity Monitor at the time. And this is how it looked like. Process Viewer, we've already looked at that. Installer, HD Namer. You just open it and then it just... And you can just name your HD whatever you want to name it. Now, I want to see if system disk works. No, it doesn't. And you also have that disk. It just opened up the text edit. Applications, clock, Mac OS. It's also known as Blue Box, which was the first implementation of the classic system. The way it worked is Mac OS 8.6 would be booted onto this computer over OS 10, and you could switch between the two. And you got all the demo apps, such as App Opener. And when you open an app, it goes up to the right, like this. And it says starting. We got this thing called Backspace. Space, the final frontier. Boink out, which is just another name for what's known as brick. We got the calculator, which allows you to use the square roots. Icon Builder, which was another developer program which allowed you to create icons for apps. So. And it's all in pix pixelated as well. You got keyboard, which is I think another name. No, it's not. It's not based on keycaps. We got QuickTime Player, and judging by the logo, this is a very old version of QuickTime. So we got a sample. We're gonna open up a sample movie. Yeah. Judging by the way the QuickTime worked, this is QuickTime Player, it doesn't say. But I'm just going to call it QuickTime 2, because that's what it, I'm assuming it to be. We're going to open up a photo in QuickTime. No, an MOV, which is actually an icon. And QuickTime 48 by 48. And we'll see if we can, we can play that. No, you can't. It's pictures, but it treats it like videos. You got sound, where I could just say something and then record it. So let's do it for now. This is a test. No, it doesn't look like it's working. The other thing about this OS is actually, the f it was one of the first First Mac OS is to have the netboot system, which allows the computer to boot from a disk image off the Ethernet port. And last but not least, we're going to be looking at the blue box, which runs a copy of Mac OS 8. And in the, the later developer previews, it became in Mac OS 9 that was emulated. But right before that, we're going to look at some readmes. Now, the internet browser that they use is, I think, is OmniWeb, which is being opened right now. It's a web navigator. And it just gives you advice. And yes, it is Mac OS 8.6, and it's 
this version of Mac OS X server does include Power Mac G4 support. So unfortunately, it only has one US DTX1 USB port at a time. And OmniWeb was before Internet Explorer became a thing in Mac OS. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's open up Bluebox. So I'm just and to do that, we're going to go into Finder and open up Mac OS. Now it's going to make the performance startup chime before loading. So we're just going to let it load for a moment. It's going to create a new startup disk because this is the first time it's being installed. And Bluebox would eventually be renamed as the classic environment which would last for five generations of the Mac OS discontinued in 10.5 Leopard. So while it's loading, we can't do any, we can just look at some of the others, but things. Server administration. We can look at some of the computer settings you just got this time, login window. Don't have anything on the startup disk yet. But we got some, what's an automatic screensaver. You can change your login UI, custom screensaver, etc. And we could also change some user preferences, such as appearance, login items, password, sound. We're gonna look at appearance before OS 8 loads. Oh, well, you know, it does, does it load? Yeah. So this is the current theme you have, and you can change it to Apple Natural, Next dish, making it more like based on the open step operating system. So if we apply that, the window just changes to become more darker. And it looks like we got the disk again and the process is almost complete. And, it, and you could also change the desktop wallpaper, which we'll just do quickly. So I've set the desktop. And that's it. You hear the performance startup chime and you got the happy Mac followed by welcome to Mac OS 8.6. So we just let it load. The startup process should be very quick knowing this is a virtual environment. If I ran this natively, it would take a little bit more slower to start up. It's just a thing with PowerPC. So we got the lollipop theme and then you got all your extensions on the bottom. The blue box environment. Right, so as you can see, it's emulating from a disk Mac OS 8.6 and it's bringing up this setup assistant. And it's gonna be a little slow as well since it's virtualized. Don't tell me it decides to just throw up on me. You also have the about macOS.app. I've already shown this emulator in developers pre developer previews 2 and 3. They discontinued it in 4 and decided to go on with the classic environment completely.
so it doesn't want to load. Fair game. Fair game. Oh, well, you know, I just triggered the interrupt. The whole thing is frozen. Nothing I can do about it. But cry. But there you have it. This is Mac OS X Server 1.0. If you have any questions, please leave it below. Thank you all for watching and see you all in my next video. This is the longest Mac OS developer a demo that I've done. So this is the last one. And hopefully I'll be able to do Mac OS developer preview one. That's the last one I haven't done yet. So thank you all for watching and see you all later. You're still watching this video? Well, there is one thing that I did not mention. This is how Mac OS X server looks like in verbose mode. So as you can see, it's not black and white, but in fact, you got the server operating system on the top, like in a window based, and everything is just loading on the bottom.